Hello everyone, welcome again in Engman YouTube channel. So right now we are going to learn about how to design a gas lift in an oil well in PipeSim software. But as you may have already experienced it, designing a gas lift is not as straightforward as designing sacrot pump or electrical submersible pump, right? Designing a gas lift is a bit more challenging, a bit more complicated. So rather than finishing the discussion in only one video, I think I'm going to separate the, the topics in several videos, all right? Uh, in this particular video, I'm going to discuss about how to create gas lift optimization plot or gas lift optimization chart that will be used to design the gas lift. So I hope the video will be interesting for all of us. So this is the pipe seam window. We start from general, well name, gas lift, active well, production well, block reverse. Let's type in comments gas lift well in pipe seam or anything that you like for tubulars. Okay, we drag the casing icon, this one, and then we take the casing from catalog. Our outer diameter of the casing will be seven inch. So just type in seven here, seven. And then I'm going to take the inner diameter of this value. 6.184 with the grade C90. Okay, let me expand the window. This one, C90, row 26. So I'm going to take this one, catalog API, outer diameter 7 inch, inner diameter 6.184 with this thickness, weight, roughness, and the grade C90. Okay, click OK. But I'm going to make the depth down to 12,000 feet. And then for the tubing, just drag the tubing icon down. All right, and I'm going to make the bottom depth 11,500 foot. With the ID, I'm going to type in manually 2.992 with wall thickness of 0 0.254 with the default roughness. All right, so far so good. In this particular example, we are going to design a vertical well. So yeah, survey type, of course, vertical, reverence options, original RKB, well head depth zero, and then bottom depth, of course, 12,000 foot, and then because we are going to design a gas lift and usually gas lift is equipped with packer. So we are going to install packer here in our example well. Okay. And then you can press this symbol, the packer. And I'm going to locate it down to 11,300 foot. All right. So you can see here the icon of the packer. For artificial leaf, we just can leave it as it is. Heat transfers also, just leave it as default. And then for the completions, all right, we press this one, CPL or completion or the reservoir. You can name it reservoir. And then for the middle of the perforation, I'm going to locate it at 11,800 foot. It is a perforation. And for the IPR model, I'm going to choose well PI or well productivity index. The reservoir pressure, 3,100 PSIA. The reservoir temperature, 200 degrees Fahrenheit. IPR basis, of course, it's liquid. And productivity index, 6.1 stock tank barrel per day per PSI. And make sure to check this use Fogel below bubble point pressure. 
All right, so to ensure that after a straight line IPR, which is the basis of this well PI IPR model, we continue with Vogel IPR below the bubble point pressure where we will have multi-phase flow, liquid, and gas, all right? And then we need to define our fluid model. We press new, we select light oil and gas, okay. And then we name the fluid, let's say oil, with water cut of 10%, GOR or gas oil ratio of 490, standard cubic feet per stock tank barrel for gas specific gravity 0.75, water specific gravity as default, and for the API gravity 29 degree API and we will have no impurity in our gas. So press close. All right, you can go also to reservoir and yeah, our IPR plot has been constructed. And at this point, you can check the validation. All right, we are already ready to do the further analysis like nodal analysis and artificial leaf design and so on and so forth, all right? So we have been validated. We are okay to go. Now let's see if we perform first the nodal analysis. We go to nodal analysis and we will perform nodal analysis at bottom hole. Okay. Let's say our outlet pressure or our wellhead pressure will be 250 PSIA. And for the inlet conditions, the data from the reservoir, of course, the reservoir pressure will be 3,100 PSIA with this reservoir temperature. Okay, let's run the nodal analysis. All right, as you can see, there is no cross-section between our tubing performance or our VLP, vertical liquid performance, the red line with our IPR or our inflow performance. So it means that our well ceases to flow. There is no production. Our well cannot flow in this current operating condition. Maybe if we can lower the outlet pressure, let's see, before we go to the gas lift section, let's see if we lower the outlet pressure down to 100 PSIA. Run. All right. We can flow, although the flow will not be that stable because we have two cross sections here. All right, so this demonstrates that if we lower our wellhead pressure or our outlet pressure in this example, we can make our flows more stable. All right, but in this situation, our desired outlet pressure is 250 PSIA. And let's check again at this condition, we cannot flow. That's why we are going to need gas lift to equip our oil well, all right? So designing gas lift is not that easy. So we will do step-by-step -step approach. In this video, we will start with this feature, gas lift response, all right? So let's press gas lift response. Branch N, of course, well head production outlet pressure, again, 250 PSIA. Reservoir pressure as default that we already input in our completion section. Reservoir pressure, 3,100 PSIA. Reservoir temperature, 200 degrees of Fahrenheit. GOR, 490 SEF per STB, water cut 10%. And let's say injection parameter, our surface injection temperature will be 90 degrees of Fahrenheit. And the gas specific gravity for our gas injection is 0.64. Injection gradient, let's follow the default, include friction losses, all right? And then for the other parameter like this one, we follow the default, maximum injection TVD, 11,298 foot the depth, the true vertical depth. 
and then for the minimum valve injection pressure drop is 150 psia and then this is for the sensitivity we will do dust injection rate at range of starting from zero no injection up to eight million standard cubic feet per day with the incremental step one press ok and then we will not do any sensitivity for our gas injection pressure the name is surface gas injection pressure we only have one so the value is 2100 psia as the surface gas injection pressure or casing injection pressure okay so let's run okay so what we will do is we create a gas lift optimization chart or gas lift optimization plot all right so this is the plot gas lift response the vertical axis shows liquid production rate whereas the horizontal axis shows the gas injection rate all right as per our sensitivity input which is from zero up to eight mmscfd and as you can see as we increase our gas injection rate we will increase our liquid production rate this is true up to five million standard cubic feet per day of gas injection rate if we increase the injection rate to six mmscfd actually we will get lower production rate compared to what we have with injection rate of 5 mm CFD. All right, so using this chart or using this plot, we will get our optimum gas injection rate. Theoretically, the optimum injection rate will be 5 because this is the maximum injection rate to maximize our liquid production rate. Above this value, we will get lower production rate so this is theoretically this is the optimum injection rate but in reality there are a lot of factors to define or to determine the optimum injection rate we need to consider the operating condition right for compressing the gas and then we also need to consider the cost of the gas as well as the the production result that we can obtain from the gas lift injection so there are a lot of factors influencing the selection of the optimum gas injection rate and in the next video actually we will select three mmscfd as the optimum gas injection rate but as far as this video goes the theoretical optimum injection rate will be five million standard cubic feet and also you can see the red line this is actually the deepest injection point which is 11,290 feet. So this is the deepest injection point that we can achieve based on the current configuration or current operating condition. All right, so far so good. We can close this window. And in the next video, we will try to learn about this one, deepest injection point. And after that, we will do gas lift design. So to recap, in this video, we learn about gas lift response in pipe seams. So actually, this is the way we try to find the optimum gas injection rate for our gas lift. All right, so I hope you enjoy the video and don't forget to subscribe, like and share to your friends and see you in the next video. Thank you.